Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and this is part 5 in my series on Symphony Security and Authentication. In this one I'm going to cover the topic of password resets which might be a little more complex than you imagined. Before we get into that let me just say that I record in high resolution so don't watch on a blurry screen, choose high definition if that will work for you and would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. Okay, now password resets does involve a lot of code. So we're going to do what we did in the register form um, recording and we're going to pull in a package which is going to take care of most of this for us. Do what I do, you need to compose the require Symphonycast's reset password bundle. Once that's installed, we'll just need to run a command and that will take us through a series of questions. So very similar to like we did with the register form. That command is symphony console make colon reset password. Okay, question one. What route should users be redirected to after their password has been successfully reset? Now it's suggesting app home. If we look at our app controller, we actually called it app home page. So I'll paste that in there, hit enter. Now it says what email address will be used to send reset confirmations. So we'll use the same one that we used in the registration thing. And we called it admin at security hyphen demo dot com. Paste that in there. What name should be associated with that email address? and that name is security. And that completes that process for us. It's created us some new files. The first one I'm going to look at is reset password request, which is an entity inside app entity and it implements reset password request interface. As you can see, it has a couple of properties, ID and user, so it has to relate to a user obviously. And then it includes a trait called password reset request trait. The main things to look at here are these dates, requested at and expires at. And you'll see they're of date time immutable. And you'll see they're of date time immutable. The important thing with these dates is that the user will only be given a certain time frame in which to change their password once they make the request. Let's go ahead now and create a migration file for our reset password request. So the way this works is that a user will make a, a password reset request that will create a reset password request record in the table. And then once that request is completed, i.e. the user um, enters their new password and it is all uh, verified, then the password reset request or the reset password request record will then be removed from the database. My migration file all looks good, so let's migrate the database symphony console doctrine colon migrations colon migrate. It'll ask you if you're sure, just click yes or just press Y. And let's look at that table now. So ID, user ID, selector, hash token, requested at and expires at. I now want to add a link on my login page for the user to click if they have forgot their password and that will redirect them then to the page where they can fill in a new password. You'll see that there is a reset password controller. So we'll come back to that shortly, but I've just grabbed the name of the route that we need there, and I'll borrow a bit of HTML from here, paste that in, and I'm just gonna customize this to my needs. So the path is the one which I've just copied from the reset password controller, and that is app forgot password request and I'm just going to ask the user forgot password. With that in place, let's go and give this a test drive. So I'll enter an email address. I'm not even bothered with the password. I'm just going to click straight on forgot password, I think. As you can see, it's sent me straight back to the login page. So the reason for that, if you recall our security uh, YAML file, Unless you're logged in, you can only visit login and register. I'm going to add one more route to this. I know it's getting lengthy and this isn't really going to scale much longer, but we're going to concentrate on authorization in the next recordings. So for now, we'll not get sidetracked. If you can live with this for now, then so can I. Let's go back and give this another go. Forgot password and here we are. So we're now at the reset password page. Fantastic. Let's have a look at the reset password controller. 
and this is the route that we're looking at. What it will do is ask if a valid form has been submitted, which in our case it hasn't, and so the other option is it will then render the form, which is the form that we see here, request.html.twig. Let's go and have a look at that. Some of this syntax should be familiar to you by now. We've created a form type called a request form type, and it just has an email field where we want to send an email to to reset passwords. I'm going to set my mail catcher running, which is a fake mail server, and I can do that with symphony open colon local colon webmail. And so this is what I'm looking at. Let's go and fill in an email address and complete this form. Okay, this is looking promising. Let's go over to the database and in our reset password request table, you'll see that we now have one record relating to user ID 9. Let's have a look at our users. And that was me, Gary at example.com. So that's all good so far. The route it redirected me to was this one, app check email, and then it rendered this page here check email.html.twig. Let's go and have a look at that. And so it's just a couple of paragraphs. It tells you that it sent you an email and to check your spam folder if you've not received it. Here's that email now. So it just tells you that in order to reset your password, you need to click that link. And it also reminds us that this will expire in one hour. So this is where that is all um, processed process sending password reset email so it looks for a user with that email address and a clever little thing here a little security thing is even if there is no uh, email address matching it will still send you to that route to tell you that an email has been sent to you next a reset token or reset tokens are generated a hashed token is stored on the password re password reset request and a public token gets emailed to the user and this is that email here so new templated email as you can see the admin at security demo and the security name are used gets sent to the user's email address and the public token gets included and you're redirected to the route which says to check your mail so this is the link that it says here if we look at the path it's reset password then reset and then a token, and that's the public token which we get sent. So reset password, reset, and then token. Let's click on this and see how we get on. So it's taken us to a page with a couple of empty password boxes. So one is the password and one is the repeat password. I'll show you how this form is created shortly. Just click on that, and it's taken us to login. So let's go and enter our new password in here and see if it's worked. Submit, and we're redirected to the home page. It looks like everything has worked. I'll show you email.html.twig, which will you will find in templates, reset password, email html.twig. So this is where the URL is created. As you can see, it's the app reset password path with the uh, token appended onto that. Let's take a look at the reset method of the reset password controller. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on here, but the bit we're interested in is this part here where the form is submitted. So checks if the form is submitted and if it's valid, and then there's really three main things which happen here. First off, it removes the request, the password reset request from the database. Let me go and look at my database and see if that has happened. So I'll give that a refresh and there you go, bang, it's gone. Great, so that's working so far. The next thing it does, it encodes the plain password which we've submitted. That then gets saved on our user entity and stored in the database with Doctrine Get Manager flush. We clean the session after reset and then we redirect to the home page. That's the route that we specified during the setup when we were asked the questions in the console. Let's have a quick look at the form. It looks like it should only have one field, but if we look at the change password form type, again, it looks like we're adding only one field, but if you look at the type of that field, it says it's a repeated type, and that itself takes a type, which is password type. So basically, the same thing twice. And really, it's just a usability thing to help the user or prevent the user from entering their password incorrectly. 
I think that should cover us for password resets. If you do have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave those in the discussion down below. I think we've got quite a lot of the ugly stuff out of the way now and in the next ones we'll work on authorization, roles, permission, access control. It's stuff which I enjoy more, but I think before you do that stuff it's important to do this stuff first. So just being thorough, hope you've enjoyed it so far, give it a thumbs up if so. And don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. One last thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every week and details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage.